The new Cardiovascular Horizons Conference took place in New Orleans on June 3rd through 6th, attracting interventional cardiologists, vascular physicians, surgeons, podiatrists, and other industry professionals from around the world. Known as the largest peripheral intervention conference in the United States, this four-day meeting unveiled new methods and data for the first time in this country. Joining us this evening is Dr. Craig Walker, an interventional cardiologist at Terrebonne General Medical Center. All right, welcome to your health with Terrebonne General Medical Center. No stranger to the program, Dr. Craig Walker. He was on when HTV started. He's still on today. Doc, welcome to the program. Thank you, Martin. Now, first of all, the new cardiovascular horizons. We've all heard it. It's getting bigger and bigger, but what is it in a nutshell? Yeah, it, it's, it's a big thing, Martin. Peripheral vascular disease is a huge problem. It's estimated to affect as many as 20 million people in this country. It's often asymptomatic, but it's quite deadly because it is associated with high rates of death as well as of disability from things like amputations. Uh, we have put together a group that's become one of the biggest multi-specialty disciplines in the world, throughout the world, in an effort to limit amputations, improve the care of these patients, serve as advocates and educators in the field, and it, it's really a, a very neat thing. It's come together very nicely. It all started right here in Homa, and it's really spread to every continent on Earth. Every time you go to this convention, there's a who's who's list. Who's the who's who's list this well, year? So many of the who's who. The man who made the first ever balloon used in medicine, the man who made the first stent ever used in medicine, mm -hmm. the people who started thrombolytic therapy, the man who founded the American Society of Vascular Surgery. The list goes on and on and on. I, really, there are a hundred such names here, but it, it really reads like uh, a who's who of the whole field of medicine. Now, who hosts the conference? Well. Uh, I, I am the chairman okay. of the conference, um, and it's uh, put on by the South Louisiana uh, Research Clinical Research Foundation, which is a not-for-profit organization that we had started in the past as an educational vehicle. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did this, and then, of course, uh, it has involved uh, getting many, many people in to help with the teaching and the mission. There are about 250 uh, physician faculty from around the world. These are, as I said, notables and a lot of attendees. It's it's really fairly intense, but it's also a lot of fun. We hear about a lot of conferences, especially in the medical field, but this one is sort of unique upon itself. Why is it so unique? Well, one thing is we've really focused on um, peripheral vascular disease, which in my opinion is tremendously underserved and incredibly important. As I said before, the sheer number of peripheral vascular disease is 20 million. Let's put this in perspective. Uh, 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 that's as prevalent as coronary artery disease. That's very prevalent, and yet it's not, uh, it's not typically diagnosed in people, often because symptoms are either not present or not really severe. Now, people think, well, gee whiz, if it's not hurting you, can it be problematic? And the answer is yes. If you have a diminished foot pulse and you're completely asymptomatic, you have a slightly worse prognosis than a woman at five years who's been diagnosed with breast cancer. That's a pretty bad prognosis. And um, if you have an ankle brachial index or a pressure in the legs that's only four-tenths the pressure in your arms, your prognosis at five years is almost as bad as lung cancer. So put in perspective, it's a real serious disease, and we can absolutely impact the outcome of people by A, making the diagnosis, and B, by better treating the disease process. And that's where really the excitement comes in at the conference. There are 24 live cases being then from eight places around the world. Uh, these are cases that uh, you're watching being done as, as they happen. You can't pick and choose your best. Mm -hmm. you're, taking really tough cases and uh, I'm happy to say once again all 24 of those cases were very successful and they taught our attendees a lot about how to better treat this disease. That's what I call batting a thousand. If we <laughs> if we look at the monitor now, uh, Dr. Walker, there, there was a young woman who spoke Wednesday and, and there she is, Angela, she spoke Wednesday morning at the conference that you treated earlier at Terrebonne General Medical Center for a circulation problem to her foot. She searched the United States for a physician 
that could save her leg and was referred to you by Emory University. What was so significant about this? Well, to start with, this young lady, uh, her name is Angela, and Angela has, has you know, cer certainly become one of the spokespeople for peripheral vascular disease. Angela's a nurse. She was, when I saw her, 27 years old and had been told by Mayo and Cleveland Clinic that they needed to amputate both of her legs. Not one, but both. Now her story was, uh, and the way she had gotten to this point, was when she was 21 years old, she had her first bypass surgery at Mayo Clinic. Uh, from the time she was 21 until age 27, she had seven additional surgeries on her two legs, and in all of that time had never become asymptomatic. She had gotten a little improvement, but had never become asymptomatic. Now, about three months before I saw her, she developed horrific pain, rest pain, and she developed a big ulcer on the top of her foot. Uh, angiography had been performed elsewhere, and that's when they had come to the conclusion that really her only option at that point was amputation. She really did have pretty substantial disease. Well, Angela, not to be, uh, she, she just couldn't imagine this happening because she's a single mom, mm -hmm. and she was taking care of her, her son, and what she was having to do was go to work every single day as a nurse on her feet in horrific pain, go home, tuck her son into bed, take pain medicines to be able to stand where she was, wake up in the morning and do this all over again. A pretty, pretty miserable existence. And she was fearful that if her legs were amputated that she would be unable to take care of her family. So that was a strong motivation in her case. She went to Emory and Emory had referred her down here. Uh, we uh, saw Angela, we were able to open her legs to restore flow. But not only did her ulcers heal, and we did this um, in very short order through an interventional procedure. Not only did her legs heal, but she has actually now started to not just fast walk, but to even jog. This is the first time her legs have been asymptomatic since she was 21. I'm 28 years old. Uh, this is something that I have been dealing with since I was about 21. I developed symptoms on a family vacation in Mexico. When I arrived back home, I was referred to a general surgeon, and when he assessed me, thought that I needed to go to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota to seek further care because of my age, um, I did receive treatment there, and I've also been to Atlanta, Georgia. I'm from Biloxi, Mississippi, so being that HOMA is so close, um, if I would have just known about this sooner, I might have not had to experience the pain that I've experienced the last few years. And if you have any signs and symptoms of the disease process, please seek treatment and exhaust every option that you have before you agree to amputation because it's highly preventable and a lot of people do not understand that. After my procedures that I had with Dr. Walker at Terrapin General, I was I am now able to uh, work 12-hour shifts on a nursing unit. I am the registered nurse. Just yesterday, I attended a summer camp trip with my son at the zoo. I'm able to do so many things that I would not have the opportunity to do if I would have opted for the amputation that was offered to me four years ago. That is fantastic, no doubt about it. What technology and or methods were introduced at this year's conference? So many. There, there's reports of a lot of things. There, there's great excitement about where we're going in this field. Once upon a time, the reason that people felt they could not do these very long blockages in people with peripheral disease is they could not cross the blockage. Well, there's a lot of new things out to cross blockages. All sorts of dedicated crossing tools. Uh, there are different techniques in terms of approach, such as coming from the foot vessels. One of the things that we really started in the world. There's tremendous excitement about that around the world. I had a lunch symposium on pedal access, and there were people hanging out in the halls. Even it was that it was absolutely jam-packed. Tremendous excitement because this allows us to treat people that could not be treated before. The second issue from that is once you open a vessel, keeping it open. And along those lines have come drug-eluting balloons, drug-eluting stents in the periphery, all sorts of new things. 
Um, I would say that we have made dramatic strides in the last few years, and I really can see a day when amputations because of ischemic disease could become a very rare phenomenon indeed. But you know, right now, it, there are big things that we have to keep in mind. There are tools, and then there's the training to use those mm -hmm. tools. And if I can give a good analogy, I can buy better paintbrushes than Picasso, but I sure can't paint a picture. <laughs> and <laughs> why good. is that? Because I, A, have uh, just about no artistic talent, frankly, <laughs> and luckily my wife Your does, wife, yeah. <laughs> but not I. And, um, and I've had no training. And so that's a bad thing. So just the tool is not the answer. Just like a paintbrush, you could give me his paintbrushes, you could throw in his paints and his easel, I still could make a great painting. You need more training, more skill, uh, more other things. That is really what we're trying to do at a conference such as this. We're trying to teach people not not just give them the tools, mm -hmm. but show them how to use it. And I know we're a little short on time today because you were in a procedure, but we ought to bring you back for a whole show and let people call up. How about that? I would love that, Martin. It'd be a lot of fun. This is such an important area. It's something that can impact us, impact our families. Uh, and it's kind of exciting that this whole effort is being led around the world from little home of Louisiana. Absolutely. For more information, where can people call to get more information on PAD, CLI, and in the conference itself? Sure. Certainly, Terrebonne General Medical Center or Cardiovascular Institute of the South would have information on both. All right. Dr. Walker, thank you so much. And uh, we're going to get you on soon for a whole show. How about that? Thanks, Morton. I would love right. it. Thanks again. We'll take a break. When we come back, more Bayou time. Don't go away.